let me just, uh, I must seek permission from uh, Nicholas Lambert first because uh, I was thinking that I'll probably, you know, while speaking to my fellow colleagues of the district judiciary who are very close to my heart, might shift to Urdu also. For the sake of communication, reaching out to their hearts, I might do that, but that's uh, with your permission at times. I, I'll try to keep it in English, but uh, for that. So thank you so much, uh, Mr. Lombard, for organizing this and to ICRC for organizing this, for partnering with us at the FGA. Uh, thank you for this. I must also thank the earlier speakers and the members of the delegation, Mr. Jamal Khan, who I haven't met, but would love to meet later on sometimes and talk about possibilities with engagement with us at the FGA. Dr. Ziaullah Rahmani is also an advisor to, to the ICRC. Uh, thank you for being here also. And Saida Amina Gilani, a legal advisor. She's probably here. I haven't met anybody, but uh, thank you for being here also. Uh, Barrister Zunaira Fayaz is not here. I'm told that she had a good session with you all. And Dr. Mohammed Tahir Mansouri was here talking about Islamic environmentalism. So uh, uh, thanks to him also for doing this. Uh, I hope that this, this particular event is not the last event, but a beginning of a relationship with ICRC. We wish to seriously partner with ICRC for a number of things, including climate change, which there can't be a more serious thing to attend, perhaps, than climate change itself, especially Pakistan as a country facing the brunt of climate change uh, very drastically. Uh, and I would, I would be requesting uh, the uh, our director general, who's you know wonderfully organized this, to partner with ICRC for perhaps a slightly more serious, a, a more more granular level program where we can do workshops and you know focus groups. Uh, this subject has to be really embedded in our in our uh, in our understanding and our judicial understanding because I think judges can make a difference. Uh, all over the world now, uh, there's been a very heavy litigation going on on the climate side, and I think the courts are playing a major role. So I think uh, the frontline judges like yourself, that's been the case in other countries. They have done a wonderful job. So you need to you know, be with it in the sense that climate change, you need to understand this is perhaps the most serious existential threat Pakistan faces at the moment. And as judges, as frontline judges, uh, you need to understand the subject and, and uh, make serious interventions where required to curb this and try to stop any such uh, move, which is, and, and, and try to go towards a climate resilient atmosphere or a judicial approach which is climate resilient. But to that I'll come later. I just, just want to share with you as a judge to a judge uh, how I've started looking at the whole sector of climate and environment. Uh, we've moved on from environmental justice to climate justice. There's been a, it took us about 20, 30 years to do that. Uh, there's been a major shift, and I'll explain that. And I just want you to share with me and, sort of un and, and be with me to understand that the thought process and how we're looking at this sector and how judges should look at this sector. It is not any legal subject for that matter. This is not uh, land acquisition, this is not specific performance, this is not civil procedure court. I don't take it as a subject, you see. It is something that's part of your life and you have to understand and feel it uh, and then only could you probably excel in understanding this subject and, and dealing with it. So do not take it as, as a law subject. I think it is far more serious than that. So uh, let me just uh, give you a little fact sheet which I'm sure, I don't know the content that was passed on to you earlier in the day, I'm sure this might have resonated earlier, or I might be repeating myself, but just, uh, I'll keep it brief, but I need to give you a fact sheet of Pakistan. I mean, Pakistan ki situation is kya hai, to understand the seriousness of the problem. So Pakistan is home to more than 5,000 years old Indus Valley civilization, which has landscapes varying from plains to deserts, forests, hills, and plateaus. It's a rich country with, you know, variety of, uh, the, the geography is so rich from coastal areas of the Arabian Sea in the south to the mountains in the Karakuram Range in the north with a population approaching 230 million or so. Pakistan is the eighth most affected country due to climate change and the sixth most populous country in the world. That is a fact sheet. Uh, Pakistani, Pakistan makes a tiny contribution to the global greenhouse gases. Uh, and, and, uh, but is amongst the countries most vulnerable to climate change 
and has very low technical and financial capacity to adapt to its adverse impacts. For Pakistan, the more immediate and pressing task is to prepare itself for adaptation. So you need to remember the two basic things within climate sphere that our country has to come up with an adaptive jurisprudence. We need to adapt to the changing climate. We can't do anything about We're not uh, uh, emitting. Uh, we are perhaps for a very negligible amount of emissions. So mitigation is not our problem. You have heard mitigation or adaptation. Mitigation is not our problem at this time. Our problem is adaptation, hai, which is a far bigger canvas to attend to judicially also which I'll just try to explain in a while. Uh, but uh, so, so when we talk about adaptation, we have to do a lot of things to adapt to adapt. And to adapt to adapt, suppose if we deal with environment in some time, then in some time it was that some factory has done something pollution, either it's pollution or the neighbor is polluting, or the share has done pollution. आप ट्राइब्यूनल के पास जाते हैं आप उसको बंद करा देते हैं उस फैक्ट्री को यू नो व द पोल्यूटर आपको पोल्यूटर नजर आ रहा है उसको बंद करा देते दिस वाज एनवायरमेंटल लॉ 101 मे बी बट लेटर ऑन वी रियलाइज कि वो पोल्यूटर तो पाकिस्तान में है ही नहीं वो पोल्यूटर तो कहीं और है जहां से पोल्यूशंस हो रही हैं और हमें सिर्फ इफेक्ट उसका मिल रहा है सो वी वी हैव नोबडी टू शट डाउन वी हैव वी कांट पास एनी ऑर्डर अगेंस्ट एनीबडी कि इसको बंद कर दो इसको बंद कर दो पोल्यूशन तो बाहर कहीं हो रही है उसका एटमॉस्फेयर एक सारा इफेक्ट ये है कि हमारे पे एक ग्लोबल वार्मिंग का हिस्सा बन चुके हैं हमें अडॉप्ट करना है कि इस नई दुनिया के साथ हमने कैसे रहना है उस अडॉप्टेशन में आपको हर सेक्टर को अडॉप्ट करना है एग्रीकल्चर को भी अडेप्ट करना है फॉरेस्ट डिपार्टमेंट को भी अडेप्ट करना है इरिगेशन डिपार्टमेंट को भी अडेप्ट करना है और जुडिशल फंक्शंस भी हमने उसके मुताबिक अपनी सोच चेंज करनी है कि हाउ डू वी डील विद दिस सो लेट मी जस्ट यू नो से अ लिटिल मोर ऑन दिस कि वी स्लोली यू नो वी मूवड ऑन इनिशियली हम लोग जब ये इन्वायरमेंट की चीज़ें कर रहे थे और ये फैक्ट्रियाँ बंद हो रही थी वगैरह वगैरह उस वक्त हम सिर्फ इन्वायरमेंटल जस्टिस के डोमेन में ऑपरेट कर रहे थे लेकिन उससे अब काफ़ी बात आगे चली गई है अब हम लोगों ने एक नई टर्म कॉइन हो गई है पाकिस्तान में भी और दुनिया भर भी विच इज़ कॉल्ड क्लाइमेट जस्टिस अब क्लाइमेट जस्टिस और इन्वायरमेंटल जस्टिस में बहुत ज़्यादा फ़र्क है इन्वायरमेंटल जस्टिस जिस मैंने आपको कहा एक पोल्यूटर को अटेंड करता है इन्वायरमेंटल प्रिंसिपल्स लगा के लेकिन क्लाइमेट जस्टिस की जब बात आती है तो हमारा मोड और भी मुश्किल है वो अडेप्टेशन का तो हम हर सेक्टर को देखते हैं जब अर्बन प्लानिंग हो रही होती है हमें उसमें भी क्लाइमेट चेंज नज़र आना चाहिए जब इरिगेशन का कोई मसला होगा या कनाल एंड ड्रेनेज का भी कोई मसला होगा तो हमें उसमें क्लाइमेट चेंज नज़र आनी चाहिए क्योंकि पानी से ताल्लक है उसका जिस तरह इन्होंने डीजी सीमेंट का जिक्र किया उधर सीमेंट प्लांट कलर कहार में लगाने लगे थे और उधर पानी है ही नहीं इट्स अ वाटर स्केयर्स एरिया एंड दे वर सेटिंग अप अ सीमेंट प्लांट विच इज़ अ वाटर गजल दैट्स वॉट अ सीमेंट प्लांट डज इट यू कंज्यूम्स अ लॉट ऑफ वाटर and they could not have done anything they they would have sucked the water from the aquifer jo udhar niche hai aur usse ye nuksan hona tha ki pehle hi pani wahan kam ho gaya hai ki katas raj temple jo hai usme kisi kisam ka pani available nahi hai kyunki kuch aur factories bhi udhar operate kar rahi thi to us waqt सवाल हमारे पास सिर्फ ये आया कि क्या आप अलाउ करेंगे कि ये यहाँ लग जाए इन्वायरमेंट का इतना इशू नहीं था जोनिंग का उनका अपना एक प्रोग्राम बना हुआ था गवर्नमेंट का बट वी टुक इट अ माइल फर्दर वी सेट नो दिस इज आल्सो अ क्लाइमेट चेंज इशू अगर हम क्लाइमेट रिजिलियंट जूर स्टूडेंट्स यहाँ नहीं लाएंगे तो ये तो उस इलाके का पानी सारा खुश्क हो जाएगा जो हो चुका है और 12 विलेजेस ऑपरेट करते हैं उस कलर का हार एरिए में उन सब्सिस्टेंस उनकी फार्मिंग है वो तबाह हो जाएंगे सो एज अ जज आपको ये बात सेंस करनी है कि इसमें क्लाइमेट का इशू कहाँ है ये मैं जो मैसेज आपको देना चाह रहा हूँ प्लेट में कुछ लिखा हुआ नहीं आएगा शायद वकील साहब भी आप ऐसी बात ना करें लेकिन यू एज जजेज विल हैव टू सेंस कि इसमें तो क्लाइमेट का भी एक इशू है जो आपको एड्रेस करना है और एक क्लाइमेट रिजिलियंट अप्रोच आपके डेस्क पे होना चाहिए कि मुझे हर चीज़ को मैं देखती हूँ यहाँ परमिशन आई है प्लाजा बनाने की कोई ऐसा केस आ गया आपके पास परमिशन का आपने उसको देखना है कि क्लाइमेट रिजिलियंट है कि नहीं अर्बन प्लानिंग अप्रोप्रिएट है कि नहीं इज़ इट अ वेरी ह्यूज कंजम्पन 
you know, item which will create a lot of problem. So you can see it from that angle. You know, the CDA case, we have said to the CDA that you have to do your urban planning and all the development you have to do in a climate-resilient way. So you have to keep this approach in your mind. You have to see cases, you have to see cases, Jazeb has also mentioned them. There are many cases in Pakistan which we have incorporated the international principles of Pakistan. You have to see that. That I will not bother you with. میں جو چیز کہنا چاہتا ہوں وہ اپروچ کی طرف جانا چاہتا ہوں جوڈیشل اپروچ کیا ہونی چاہیے سو ایز ای جج اوور دا پیریڈ آف ٹائم دیٹ آئی ایم بین ڈیلنگ ود انوائرمنٹ آئی تھنک اٹ از اباؤٹ ٹائم دیٹ وی ہیو اے بایو سینٹرک اپروچ ٹوورڈس ایڈیوکیشن بایو سینٹرک سے مراد یہ ہے کہ ساری دنیا تو ہم انسانوں کے لیے ہم چلاتے ہیں نا ہم اینتھروپوسین اینتھروپوجینک اپروچ ہے کہ زندہ ہیں انسان ہے انسانی کیوں دیکھ رہے ہیں انسانی کا انٹرسٹ ہم واش کر رہے ہیں we have to go beyond humans and think of nature نیچر کا بھی ہم بھی حصہ ہیں نیچر کا you have to start thinking of nature you have to start thinking of the trees you have to start thinking of the rivers you have to start thinking of nature all around you the air itself اگر air اب لاہور کا حال آپ دیکھ رہے ہیں اگر ایر کی آپ ریسپیکٹ کرتے اور بہت سے کیسز ہم نے انٹروین کیا تھا اگر گورنمنٹ فالو کرتی تو آج یہ سموک کی سیچویشن لاہور میں نہ ہوتی یو ڈسٹروئی دی ایر کوالٹی ان لاہور وچ از ان ٹرن افیکٹنگ اس تو ابھی آپ کی اپروچ جب آپ انوائرمنٹل کیس دیکھیں گے تو دی اپروچ ٹوورڈز ایڈیوڈیکیشن شوڈ بی بائیو سینٹرک وی نیڈ ٹو گیو سپیس ٹو نیچر اینڈ انشور دیٹ اٹس آپریٹنگ سسٹمز ریمین فنکشنل Humankind has taken control of the planet and has stabbed, started destabilizing its natural systems. Judges need to view themselves as judges of nature. Ye aapka prime duty. Uh, uh, judges of the planet as well as the whole thing is now also referred to as planetary justice. Aap planet ke context mein cheezein dekh rahe hain jab aapke paas ye mukadma aata hai. Ye approach kitni fark ho jati hai. میں اوور دا پیریڈ آف ٹائم آپ سے میں خیال ان کا ذکر ہوا ہے جو منصوری صاحب آئے تھے آئی تھنک دس از ناٹ اے کانسیپٹ دیٹ وی آر امپورٹنگ فرام دا ویسٹ ڈو ناٹ تھنک آف کلائمیٹ اور انوائرمنٹ ایز ایز اے سبجیکٹ دیٹ از بین تھرسٹ اپون آس دیٹ از کم فرام آؤٹ سائڈ آئی تھنک دس از بین دیر اے پارٹ آف آر ریلیجن فار اے ویری لانگ ٹائم بٹ وی نیور بادرڈ اپریشیٹ اینڈ اٹ گیو می اے چانس ٹو گو تھرو اٹ and look at Islamic environmentalism, which I think is far deeper. They can have any judge who train karna to apne context mein train karna hai. Hamari apni cultural values hai, hamari apni ethos hai, aur agar un ethos ke andar hamara mind jo operate karta hai, usko hi hame stress karna chahi. Aur mein samajhta hoon ke religion is perhaps the first thing that we need to read when we're talking about uh, climate change or environment, because it actually is giving us such wonderful principles. جس کے ساتھ میں پرسنلی ریلیٹ کرتا ہوں میں اس کے ساتھ آئیڈینٹیفائی کر سکتا ہوں اور میں اس کو ایم شور پھر ایڈیوڈیکیشن میں استعمال بھی کر سکتا ہوں تو فار ایگزامپل وین اٹ کمس ٹو جوڈیشل ایجوکیشن پرٹیکولر ان دا فیلڈ آف انوائرمنٹل لا اٹ از امپورٹنٹ ٹو کیپ ان مائنڈ دا کانٹیکسٹ ان وچ دا ججز آپریٹ ہیں دس از آلسو فار دی اکیڈمی سی وی لیڈ ٹو لک ایٹ دی انوائرمنٹ سو اپروچنگ انوائرمنٹل لا تھرو دا لینس آف ریلیجن اینڈ اسپرچولیٹی کین انڈیڈ بی اے پاور فل ٹول اور میں اس اس اینگل سے آپ کے ساتھ تھوڑا سا شیئر کرنا چاہتا ہوں اینڈ آئی ایل بی شیئرنگ سم نیمز آف ونڈرفل آتھرز اگر آپ کو وقت ملے تو ان کی کتابیں آپ دیکھیں اور پڑھیں بھی نصر عبد الحسین نصر کرٹیسائز دی ماڈرن سیکولر ورلڈ ویو فار واٹ ہی پرسیو ایز اے ہارم فل ایٹیچیوڈ ٹوورڈس نیچر یہ ویسٹ کا بھی بہت ہارم فل اپروچ ہے ٹوورڈس نیچر ہی بلیو دیٹ دا کرنٹ ایکولوجیکل کرائسز از اے اسپرچول پرابلم rooted in the forgetfulness of the sacred nature of the world, he argues that modernity has led to an exploitative and instrumental, instrumentalist view of nature, contributing to environmental degradation. We are a consumerist society. You see, when you go to Dubai, I think it's the worst country when I, talk, when I think of you know, environmental degradation. Uh, that's, that's the kind of, you know, picture that he's saying. But if we, if we look at our own principles, he supports the development of an Islamic environmentalism that is rooted in spiritual and ethical teachings of the religion. He believes that Islam can provide a comprehensive and integrated approach to environmental issues, encompassing ethical, 
social, economic, and political dimensions. Uh, for example, the, I'm, I'm just going to refer to the concepts in Islam, or then you can relate to uh, this environment or climate context. Tawheed is our concept, unity of God. The Quranic concept of Tawheed underscores the idea that all things come from one creator. This perspective encourages a holistic approach to the environment, viewing the earth and all its inhabitants as interconnected and interdependent. Ye yaad rakhe jab aap drakht girate hain, usse aap kitni biodiversity effect karte hain. Parindhe effect ho rahe hain, insects effect ho rahe hain, aapko nazar nahi aar. Aap samajhte hain, aap hi hain. Hame bade arse se ye problem hai ke hum hi hain is dunia mein chalane wale. We are the ones who are controlling the planet. That is wrong. We are just one of the millions of species on the planet. Aap destroy karenge cheeze, to sara system, ye jo ek one hai na, earth is all one. It's one interconnected system. Ye sara malfunction karne jaag jaye, short circuit ho jaye. Agar aap kisi cheez ko disturb karte. Ye disturbance hi hume aaj jidar lai khadi ki huye, humne, because insaan ne ye disturb karna shuru kar diya cheezo ko. Ye disturb nahi karna chahiye. Dusri cheez, stewardship, khalifa ka concept. The Quran emphasizes that humans are stewards, khalifas of the earth. This concept promotes responsible management of the earth's resources. Agar hum is angle se aate hain is cheez ko dekhne, to hume zara zada samajh aati hai ki dekhe hamara hamara mazhab bhi yeh keh raha hai ki aapne khayal rakhna hai cheezon ka, aapne ab sari sari life forms ka khayal rakhna hai. Hum bahot arse se yeh jo hai na hum hi hain yeh yeh approach ka zara khayal rakhe yeh thik nahi. Balance, mizan. The Quran speaks about balance in creation and warns against upsetting this balance. Climate change, which is driven by human activities, is disrupting the Earth's natural balance. And there will be no doubt in anyone that if the entire balance is disrupted, then the climate extreme weather is coming. You can see every place, how fast the rains are coming, how many cyclones are coming, what's happening. Or you are tempering with nature. Tamper kar rahe. And this might lead to, I don't know what, one day, but we are doing this, and we are the main culprits, to my mind. Israf, avoiding waste. Islam discourages wastefulness, the, jiska matlab israf. The current patterns of consumption and waste, especially in more developed countries, are contributing significantly to the greenhouse gas emissions and climate change. Justice, Adil. Climate change is a matter of justice as it disproportionately affects the poor and vulnerable, people who often have contributed least to the problem. Or isme koi shak nahi hai ki climate or environment ka effect غریب آدمی پہ vulnerable آدمی پہ سب سے زیادہ ہے because وہ تو adapt بھی نہیں کر سکتا اور resilient بھی نہیں ہے کہ اس کو deal کر سکتا ہے floods آئیں گے تو آپ اور ہم تو ادھر ہی بیٹھے ہوئے لیکن جو لوگ تباہ ہو رہے ہیں وہ کوئی اور ہیں because they're not resilient enough to deal with the situation they're not prepared either or neither do we have the funds to deal with the situation ہما protected areas the Islamic principle of ہما refers to a system of community based management of resources where certain areas are set aside for conservation of natural resources, wildlife, and biodiversity. Lessons kya hain? Kuch lessons to mujhe baut pasand hain personally, and I want to share that with you. Aur ye hadith hain, jo mein aapke saath share karta hoon. Waste not from a flowing river. One day, the Prophet, peace be upon him, passed by Saad ibn Waqas, razayullah, while he was performing wuzu. The Prophet asked Saad, what is this wastage? Saad replied, is there wastage in wuzu also? I'm sitting by a river. The Prophet said, yes, even if you are sitting by a flowing river, you have to be careful. Just imagine. Kabhi socha aapne ke abhi river guzar raha hai, aur aap baithe wuzu kar raha hai, to aapko udar bhi careful hona hai ke paani zaya nahi karna. Kabhi, mein toh nahi soch sakta, mein toh khayal bhi nahi aana tha. Mein shah laga hi roon saari shahami, ke paani toh free chal raha hai. But look at what the Prophet has said at that time. That even for wuzu from a flowing river, we don't be wasteful in your, in, in your behavior, in your, in your pattern. And ye aap pe, aur hum sab pe, jab tak is climate change ka issue hai na, hum ne apni life ke andar internalize nahi kiya na, ki hum ne apni life mein aap batiyan bujhaen, apni cheezen khayal rakhen, to ye change nahi aayega. Ye is tarah judgments nahi likhi jayengi, agar aap personally wo kaam nahi karte, wo jhoot hooga, ki kuch aur likhte kuch hai, karte kuch hai. Jab tak aap apni personal life mein ye changes nahi laayenge, jab ye wastefulness khatam nahi karenge, be careful nahi honge to ye cheeze nahi banengi. Dusra baut zabadas hai, isi ke baare mein thor se explanation hai, the hadith exemplifies the importance of not wasting vital resources. 
even when there is no supposed scarcity. As Muslims, it should simply be within our character not to be wasteful. And I understand that the food that we are eating, the food that we are eating, this is not what our religion is actually prescribing. But anyway, this is not a lecture in religion, this is a lecture in climate change. So keep in mind these things. Unfortunately, in this day and age, we waste water when doing the laundry, washing the dishes, having long baths, and of course, when making wazoo. But make sure when you have a bath tomorrow, make sure you're not wasting water. You will feel like it's a joke, but it's serious. Actually, there will be a time, as this predict, that there will be no water for even taking a shower. اور شاید وہ کہتے ہیں تولیہ گیلہ کر کے اس طرح نہ چھوڑیں گے تو نہائیں گے یہ دن بھی آنے والے تو ان کو آوائیڈ کرنے کے لیے let's internalize as judges we are role models for the society your conduct makes a lot of difference so see if you can do that ایک اور بڑی حضرت علی سے منصوب ہے یہ be like a honey bee یہ بہت it's touched me deeply and it says be like a honey bee anything it eats is clean anything it drops is sweet and the branch it sits upon does not break. What a beautiful thing. Be like a honey bee. So, be like a honey bee. And, and walk gently on the earth. This means leading a lifestyle that is in harmony with the planet and not against it, as is prescribed in Islam. So, just like a honey bee, we should be climate conscious in all that we do, taking heed to not harm Allah's beautiful earth. So it goes on, but in the end, I would like to say that you'll have to change your approach towards life if you really want to understand environmental law. Do not take it as a law subject. Take it as part of your life, you see. And in order to be better judges in this area of climate and environment, first feel nature, understand nature, and feel that you are a judge of the nature you're guarding the rights of nature, not of the human being in front of you. Now, there are also legal rights in our judgment. We have given the right to the legal right. You have a legal right to come and approach. You have a legal personhood to come to the court. So keep that approach. Be biocentric in your approach. And good luck to you all. Thank you.